Sorry about that, guys. We had to start a new stream here because we're having problems with our we're having problems with getting our our picture correct. So That's I'm safe. hoping this is correct. Hopefully, I got it right this time. Yes. Yay. Right. I'm so sorry if you joined the other stream and I messed it all up. So I don't know why the camera was sideways, but we got it fixed now. We're new at all this, so this is only our second live stream ever. So uh, we messed up our first attempt on this one, but uh, you know, we, it's been over three months since we did a live stream, and uh, so a lot of things have changed since then. Uh, most of you guys already know that I quit my job and uh, do this full time now. So I thought there might be a lot of questions about me quitting my job and our big trip across America uh, that you guys might want to ask us. So I guess I'll get started with saying, um, since I've went full time, it's so much different now uh, to be home all the time and uh, be able to spend all day with the kids, which actually this week they started back at school, but like uh, summer flew by. Yes, We. Uh, sure. I really thought we'd have all this time to do all this stuff this summer, which we did do a lot of stuff, but I had to work out a two-week notice with my work, and then after that, we spent like three weeks working on the motorhome, right. and then we were planning on going on a three-week trip that, if you watched all our videos, you know, ended up turning into a one-week trip, but we, uh, so a lot of the summer was taken up with, with trying to get to the trip with the RV and then the RV breaking down and it, it took a long time to edit all the footage from the RV trip. Um, it was over 11 and a half hours of video on our trip and over 2,000 videos. So I spent a lot of time after we got back just trying to edit all that and I had to put in you know some Fairmont videos to fill in because they were quicker and easier to edit. But it actually crashed my editing software doing that last video that was an hour and 45 minutes long so I've been using iMovie and trying to get that video out I went to save it and it would not save um, it would only save about an hour of it so I had to save the first hour and then go back and delete the first hour out of it and save the second you know half of 45 minutes and then put them together on my phone so it was a nail biter there for a minute if we were even going to be able to do it in two videos because I really didn't want to break it up into three, you know, and just show us driving in a rental car. But it was a real bummer, you know, that the, we ended up having to sell the motorhome. Um, we really hated to see it go. Yeah. But uh, I probably should introduce everybody just in case somebody doesn't know. But I'm, my name is Josh or Sleeper Dude, whatever you want to call me. This is Tosh. Most of you people already know that. And we got Squeezy here, and we got Ralphie, and we got Wawa over there. And we have all kinds of uh, written down questions from before, but last time when we did a live stream, everybody was like, please do more live questions. So what we're planning on doing is doing a couple from here, a couple from there, and switching it up. So if you have live questions, uh, feel free to put those in. And we will go back and forth between the two. Is there any live questions already that I need to address? Uh, no, 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 not yet. Oh, why don't you know how to do a live stream? <laughs> That's probably That's a good probably, one. Yeah, uh, exactly. I tried to schedule this one so you would see ahead of time that it was coming out. And then apparently I didn't know how to rotate my phone around to do it. So we're going to have to do some more uh, work on that on my part. But um, Are you getting another RV? A couple <sighs> weeks ago he said no way. Yeah, when we came back, when we filmed us coming back in our interviews uh, then, I was totally out of the RV business in my head at that time. Um, but, you know, really after I've had some time to think about it and we I've talked been about, talking about it, she really wants to do another RV. And we're in the works of trying to get some stuff going with the Mini Winnie to get it back going. I know a lot of you guys probably want to see it going. But... I feel like in order to do the Mini Winnie project, it needs to have an overdrive transmission and maybe even, you know, at the very least, we're going to have to probably rebuild that engine because it lost oil pressure. A lot of you guys were saying, 
was it just a standing unit on the mini winnie? No. So the mini winnie, if you let it cool all the way down and start it up, it has 40 pounds of oil pressure when it's cold. But you drive it, you know, 10 miles or something, and it just keeps losing oil pressure. So we're probably going to have to put a set of bearings in it and an oil pump. I would love to do some performance stuff to it, not to make it a race motorhome or nothing, really, as of right now, at least. But, you know, I would love to go four barrel with it, maybe fuel inject it. Uh, it'd be cool to put just like an RV cam in it, maybe do a little bit of head work, because I'm sure 74 was not a peak year for the 360, for sure. But, yeah, we're, we're seriously thinking about doing some work to the motorhome. We learned a lot of stuff from doing the other one, because a lot of you guys made comments saying, okay, you should have used this product or that product. Some of that stuff we kind of knew because we we were trying to do it in a, like a three-week process. We know it probably would have been better to do some things, you know, a little more expensive way or a little more time-consuming way. We really didn't have time for that because the kids had to go on a trip after they got back. Um, so... Yeah, the answer is yes, we plan on doing another RV. We're hoping to do something with the Mini Winnie, and we're working on getting some parts sourced for that now. Uh, so, the big question is what happened to Ralphie's hair? Uh, Ralphie's <laughs> hair. So, Ralphie, Ralphie got a perm, right? Yes. So, Ralphie wanted his hair curly, so Mimi permed it for him, and that's why he's four inches taller than what you remember. <laughs> yes. Um, Another question that we have written down somewhere in this list is who's older? And I think a lot of you people know, but uh, Squeezy is actually... The baby. She's the baby, of course, and she is 13 months younger than him. So they're, you know, just about one year apart in age. So that's why they are... Uh, they look, they look twins. like they're twins, but they're not actually twins. What would your dream car be if you could find it here right What would your dream car be? Oh, dream car. I, I thought you had it in the driveway. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess dream car would be, um, you all know I really love Fairmont wagons. I also really love Nova wagons. Um, and maybe once the kids are grown, I would say a two-door coupe. But um, I guess dream car as of right now would be a Nova wagon or a Fairmont wagon. The problem with Nova wagons and why I didn't, put my big block Chevy in a Nova instead of a Fairmont is every Nova I find is like 10 grand for like a, I really like the 62 to 67 body style and I can't afford to buy one. Maybe one day we'll be able to get a Nova because that was my first car. I had a 63 Nova was first. If you're wondering if there's animals here, we have to do this live stream away from our home because we have very poor area. We live out in the country. Yeah. Videos take me all night long to upload because of our internet service. So Scooty is here uh, because we had to go to someone else's house to do the live stream. So only Scooty was able to come. Rocky is a little too messy. But one thing I'd like to address too. I know you guys are used to every single comment you make getting answered by us. And that's what we've done, you know, up until this point with our channel. Well, if you haven't had your comment answered lately on a video... It's not because we have stopped or slowed down answering comments. It's not that. It's just that we've had so many comments that we're putting the same amount of hours in to comments. We spend two, three hours a day most of the time doing comments. But we're having, this last week, we had 200,000 people a day watching our channel. So we're still doing the same amount of comments. It's just there is so many of them that we... I have not been able to queue up. We've, we've been prioritizing super thanks comments because, you know, those people paid money to do a comment. We we feel that we need to answer them for sure. Um, can we get a Bicycle Garage collaboration? I, I'd love to. If y'all can get us one, that'd be great. I actually emailed him uh, a while back trying to do something, uh, and I never got a response. It's I mean, it's really hard to get a hold of bigger channels. I'm sure some of you have tried to get a hold of me it's hard to get a hold of me even because if we we have between direct messages, comments, emails, stuff like that, I mean, we have hundreds of people easily a day trying to get a hold of us. So, yeah, it would be neat to do collaboration with Bicycle Garage. He's, I think he's a couple hours from us in Tennessee. 
So we live in East Tennessee near Chattanooga, if you didn't know that. A lot of people ask that question too. But let's let's go to you have any live ones? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but let me do one here. So <laughs> any plans to build a new shop is the first one on the list here. So yes, I actually talked today with some people about working on a shop. Um I really need a place to store more vehicles. We're, we're able right now to get four in the shop and still have our tools there. I would love to build a, something really big to where I could put, you know, a dozen cars or more in it, but we're gonna have to figure out the finances of that because if you know us, you know, we, we pay for it if we do it. We don't get loans and stuff. So we got to work on that and see. That's in the works, but it's probably pretty far down the road probably be a video on the second channel if we do it showing the build and stuff but i would love to build a, a shop uh, a bigger shop that'd be awesome for sure um what's next uh will rocky have his own office in it probably so we've really thought about putting like a doggy door in the shop to where rocky can go <laughs> in and out he goes uh, in and out anyway <laughs> um kids nicknames and how they get them there's really not any story to that really um, they really just got them over the years. I always call them my nicknames, and those are the ones that stuck. I can't think of specific reasons why they got their nicknames, but uh, you know, they are, are you going to be at Cletus and Cars in Bristol? Yes, we plan on going to Cletus and Cars in Bristol. I'm trying my best to get in the event as far as competing, but I have emailed and commented and everything else and I've not got a response yet. I would love to be in the burnout competition or in the Bristol 1000 race. Probably the best way to make that happen would be you guys going and commenting on Cletus's videos uh, because we have tried everything we can to get a hold of them and we're not getting any response as of right now with it. How many cases of Vianus would it take for you to sell a turbo coupe? Oh man, cases of Vianus. Uh, I might sell a parts car turbo coupe at some point. I don't really plan on, on selling the uh, the turbo coupe that drives as of right now. I'd love to five-speed swap that one. Hey, we got our bourbon barbecues here, okay? We can't pour one out here. My mother won't be mad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't really plan on selling the turbo coupe. That was my... Wow. A car just like that was my first turbo car. Thank you, Brad. That was craziness. Oh, does he have a question? No. Okay. Thank you, Brad, for the... Was it Super Chat? Is that what it's called? I, so. I know last time you guys were asking for us to turn the Super Chat on, and we didn't know how to do it back then, but we got it turned on now. Um, what about a Clyde Laborski? Laborski? That'd be cool. He lives, like, forever from us, but... Is it, does he live in South Dakota? I think he lives in North Dakota, but... Oh. Morty, road trip. Uh, Morty has been very nice lately to uh, road trip. <laughs> Morty's been very nice lately to shout us out on his channel. We really appreciate that. Um, we'll definitely have to return the favor to tell you to go check out Morty. Um, he has a great channel. But yeah, that'd be great. He's just really far away from us. Um, I don't really know. I think maybe Dylan McCool and Vostrick Garage are local ish well, to us. But that would be cool. What's the next one? So, uh, how much profit do you make off the car? You sell usually not much or nothing. Um, most of the time, we spend so much getting them running and driving, and I tend to like ugly cars that no one else likes. So um, we did we did okay on some of them, you know. But most of them, we are in the break-even stage. Um, if it wasn't for the YouTube income from the videos, we wouldn't make any profit on a lot of cars. But every now and then, we make some money on one. We probably made a little bit on the Galaxy, but um, yeah. We don't make a whole lot on them. Uh, we've sold probably a third of the cars you've seen on the channel. Most of you already know which ones we sold from our update video. but. Since then, uh, I don't know if we've sold anything hardly since we did the update video on which ones are sold and which ones haven't. But uh, one question was, how does this affect the kids at school? So how does it work out at school? Does anybody, are they nicer or are they mean to you? Or? Um, well, I mean, they don't really know anything about it. I mean, they know who we are. They don't really care. They don't. Oh, yeah. Not necessarily. Well, they don't really. So y'all aren't celebrities at school. Well, well there is one kid in my class that always talks about Rocky and stuff. Oh, uh, like 
So <laughs> they like rocking. A lot of them talk about like stuff. Yeah. Uh, Granny Goat is our Christmas tree. It's very, very old. Um, she has no teeth. She's so old. The vet said she's just like, you know, she's very old. So here's one for you, wifey. Um, it says, have you ever said you're out of your mind on a project vehicle that I have? No, I don't think I've ever said no to anything that you brought home. There's been several I didn't like. She don't like the motorcycles. I don't like the motorcycles just because people can't drive. I don't know why. Um, and I never have like the turd big like LCD station wagons that you love, but I don't ever say no or give you a hard time. Right? Yeah, you probably know if you watch this a lot. She likes more of the traditional cars like the you know, C10 trucks and stuff, and some of the cars that are more uh, seen more often, you know, more so than me. I, she doesn't like the other car, mainstream cars. She likes more of the mainstream yeah. stuff. Where me, if it's a Mustang or Camaro, I appreciate cars like that, but it it's not for me. You. It's like, I, I see one of them in a show, I'm like, man, that's nice, but it's not like I've got to have one of those. Same way, a lot of you guys probably wonder about some of the bigger cars we've had on the channel. Really what calls me is like small unibody cars. When it comes to trucks or big heavy cars, I really don't. I, I appreciate them, and if you have one, I love it. I look at them, I like seeing them. But the ones that really just, you know, tug at my heart is the smaller unibody cars. So we usually get our RC colas from the local um, farmer's co-op, which is kind of odd, but we bought feed there, and we see they have the RC colas in the glass bottle. That's where we get ours. Um, did I get any more cars from the junkyard yet? Uh, we have not been able to go back because every time uh, we were going to go, it like poured the rain the day before. So we were planning on going back and trying to save as many as we can. But maybe next week. It's like been thunderstorming here every day. Right. What's the best way to get people to know you have a channel? Oh, man. What's the best way? Um... I mean, probably the biggest things that helped my channel was, I mean, really the big important things when you're trying to build a channel is your thumbnail picture that everybody's looking at is very important. They say that's like more important than your actual video sometimes. Your thumbnail picture is extremely important and your title is extremely important. But also, a, a thing that helped me out a lot um, early on was Hot Rod Hoarder, my friend. He had a bigger channel than me, and he would uh, mention my channel. The same thing that Mort's he's doing, doing for me now. Those are big things. So if you know somebody or can get in contact with somebody that's a little bit. Uh, Hamiltonville Farms. Hamiltonville Farms uh, included us in the video. What are y'all laughing about? Included us in the video. So things like that really help if you can get somebody that's a little step above you on the YouTube ladder to help you out. But really, getting your title getting your uh, thumbnail picture, and then early on in your video, getting your point across. I don't really like long, you know, a lot of people will, will repeat things and do a, like a big long intro that makes no sense. You gotta get right to the point and get them. How did you come up with your Sleeper Dude name? Sleeper Dude came from, if you go back in my videos, click on my username, click on videos, and you can sort them by oldest or whatever. If you go to my oldest videos, I started out on YouTube in 2008 making videos about my Maverick, and that car was flat hood, completely stock appearing car. It ended up being a big block turbo car that ran sixes in the eighth mile. So basically that car, my LTD wagon that was uh, twin turbo LS, and my Starlet that was twin turbo LS, all those were flat hood cars, and they looked completely stock. So I've always liked sleeper cars. So I always built sleeper cars, I went to change the name of my channel because it used to be a different name that nobody could remember. And I just, I was going to do Sleeper Guy. That's something nobody knows. I was going to do Sleeper Guy and it was already taken. So I went to Sleeper Dude instead. So one, one more question we got uh, was everybody was asking if the kids wanted to have their own YouTube channel one day. So all of them at different times have talked about doing this, but... So, Squeeze, right here, you really want to have a channel, right? Is what, yeah. 
Squeeze has already filmed some stuff <laughs> and, edited. and edited it. She's been editing videos, but but uh, we haven't let her have her own channel yet. Uh, she really wants to make slime videos and stuff. Uh, so she has already been filming and already been editing, but I'm really hesitant to let my kids on social media because... Yeah, so they don't have cell phones. They don't Snapchat or TikTok. And we're probably old school and not cool parents for that, but that's just what we do. Drink your RC Colas. So we have not yet let them. Um, we're not promoting them having a YouTube channel yet because we don't really like all the stuff they would see. We see a lot of mean comments from time to time, and we're you know adult enough that it still even affects us as adults to see you know terrible comments and stuff. We really don't want a child seeing that kind of stuff. So. We'll see. Maybe they'll end up on kid YouTube where there's no comments and stuff at some point, but as of right now, uh, that's a no for them. But they all do have an interest. You guys have all yeah. sorts of I'll okay. follow I'll follow Ralphie wherever he goes and he, he knows that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give him a two claps and a Rick Claire. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rick okay. You ready? Two claps and a Rick Claire. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I heard that a lot on the trip. But uh what do the kids plan on doing when they grow up? Squeeze, will you have an abbreviated version of this? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to college for five years and then get like a master's degree or something. And then I'm probably going to like pet sit at one point like as a teenager for a halftime job. And um, I'm probably going to... Like. You want to try to do? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know I mean? it she out. used to ask us how long do you have to go to college to be a pop star. That was what she used to ask us. Um, yeah. So, what did you like and dislike about sleeping in the RV? Did you guys like? Loved it. Loved I loved it. loved it so much. No, I it slept terrible. Happy. I slept yeah. awesome. The first night we slept in it. Me and my wife's bed was, or well, everybody's bed was facing downhill, but my head was downhill. And, and he didn't think when he did the air jacks or, or the jacks or whatever. So it had no jacks to level it, so we were sitting at an angle everywhere we slept. That was, yeah, that was. So I didn't sleep too well with my head facing downhill, <laughs> um, and I didn't sleep very well the first night in Missouri because I was worried about a breakdown. Uh, what about some good power bonds for a 96 t bird game? Right, thank you, James Stout, for the $10. I appreciate it. What? What about some good um, power bonds for a 96 t bird game? 96, that's a 4.62 valve. I mean, honestly, with those motors, I mean, anything cam and, and valve springs really helps, but my top choice would be like cam valve springs and a turbo. I say that about any modern engine because usually they have pretty good heads already. Um, so on an older engine, I might have a different answer, but on a modern engine that already has good cylinder heads and usually have pretty good intake, I usually say cam valve springs and turbo that bad boy. That'd be the most power for your buck, you know. Is it is the Mini Winnie too small for trips? What do you guys think? Is the Mini Winnie too small? Yes. Yes, very so much. much too small. I think it's good for driving. It'll be good size for driving. I think it'll be better for driving, but I. I'll, we'll figure out. We have never slept in a smaller motorhome, so we don't know. Yeah. Who was that? Okay. So I like to shout out some of them. But I, I don't know. I think it'll be better for driving. The other one was 27 feet long plus the motorcycle on the back, so we were like 30 feet. There was times that was a little big. Out of all the states we stopped in, which was the most friendly? Really? Well, South Dakota, I guess. They were, there was a lot of really nice people there. There yeah. was, there was. Like, seriously, not. Nicer than I thought they would be. Nicer than they are here. I mean, we spent the most time in South Dakota, yeah, too. True. So, but we met the most people in South Dakota that were really nice to us. Uh, we didn't run into anybody that was mean. How old are you? How old am I? Ha! <laughs> First, comment how old you think I am. I like to do Come that. On. I like to do that. Comment how old you think I am, and then I'll tell you the real answer next. But, all right, do we do meet and greets? So, we did a meet and greet at that uh, youth group. Oh, gosh. You got, you got oh. Andrews. 28, 35, 45, 35, 38, 33. 28. All right. All right. 40. 
I'm, I'm 36, right? I think I'm 36. Some people are 36. I'm 36, so there you go. A lot of people think I'm younger than I am usually, but I'm 36. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, thank you. All right, so do we do meet and greets? We did one at a local church. Uh, some of you guys were there probably. Um, we'll probably do that again. Um, if they have it again next year to help out their youth group. But um, we're planning on being at Cletus and Cars Bristol, and we are definitely planning on going to Ford Fest. I am working on the Super Coupe very hard to try to get it there. Hopefully it'll get there. If not, we might have a backup plan with like a Turbo Coupe or a Falcon or something. But we're definitely going to try to do uh, Ford Fest. I kind of like to go to LS Fest and what's that other one? Mopar, Mopar, Mopar Fest or whatever it is. But I'd really like to get the dark wagon in good enough shape to go that far. Uh, not that I don't think it's mechanically probably good enough, but it needs floor pans. I've been in contact with a company about floor pans, and they basically told me to call them back in like a month. So I'm going to be in contact with them because I'd really like to put floor pans and cores in the dark. So what happened to your Maverick? The Maverick, I owned it for like... Five or six years at least. We had too many kids for one. <laughs> we had three kids in three years. So between her and her, they're three and a half years apart. So we had three kids in three years. And we were going to events like we went over to Z-Max at Charlotte with it. And we pulled an enclosed trailer behind it. You may have seen that video. Yeah, we have slick on it or something. And yeah, we had slick casings on the back of it. And we, we about wrecked it in the rain and everything when we were over there. So it was sketchy. It had two seat belts in the back and we had three car seats in there. So we eventually decided we had to build something bigger. That's when I got the Valari wagon and barely made any videos on it at all. And then we got that Valari wagon would have been a great will it start. We bought that Valari uh, for eight hundred bucks, got it started at their house and drove it home forty five minutes and then buffed it out and got it going. I wish I would have made videos back then of that stuff, but we didn't film that kind of stuff back then. We just filmed our racing stuff. So what's it going to be like filming when your kids are back at school? Well, this is the first week where they're back at school. We're kind of experiencing that. So, um, you know, some of the work I'm having to do while they're not there, obviously, but what we're trying to do is I'm trying to do more editing while they're going to school and then filming when they get home from school uh, if they want to film with us. So, it's a choice on whether or not Thank they you. want to film with us. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Graham, yeah. New RV fun, yes. Oh, thanks. We're about to get on it. So, um, it's different. I have to kind of pick and choose when we're filming, when we're editing. But, as you guys probably know, it's about 50-50 time between editing and filming. So, I've just been trying to do editing while they're going to school. And that way we can work out the shop together when they get home. But a lot of people ask about the girls being in the videos more. Squeezy currently doesn't seem to have much interest in working on the cars. I don't want anybody to think that I don't want my daughters working on cars. It's not that at all. So uh, Wawa has an interest. I preferably, I'm usually there. You just don't see me. I'm sometimes videoing or I'm just like not what you she she likes to hang out, out and she'll read it. She'll come out in the shop with us and read a book uh, or something like that. And they hang out more when it's not 105 degrees. Yeah, the heat, the heat is a uh, been a deal lately. So we have no air conditioning or anything in our shop. So sometimes it's 100 plus degrees in the shop. But uh, Wawa has some interest in the car stuff. Squeezy. And she would really like to have a Volkswagen. Yeah. Wawa. Beetle. Oh, this yes. would be a good time to say green car. So, green beetle? car is definitely a yellow beetle. A yellow one. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't know there was a yellow in there. Okay, mm, so yellow definitely. Volkswagen beetle, the old beetles. Yeah, the old ones. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to look for a yellow Volkswagen beetle. Ralphie, which some of your uh, green cars? The Corvette or a, um, a Ranger or a Jeep Wrangler. Okay. Excellent choices. Okay. Okay. I've never had. I've had a Ranger, but I never had the other ones. What about you, Squiddies? A black with pink striped limo. Limo. Oh, a limo. We might have to get a limo on the so channel. So you guys got a limo? Send us an email. <laughs> so here's another one. What does your wife do for work, honey? 
What do you do? What don't I do for work? Hello? You work? <laughs> so what do you do for work? Um, so I file insurance for an eye doctor. I file insurance claims. And I do sleep reduced stuff. And I do mom stuff. And I do all the yard work. Okay. Hey now, yeah. hey now, yard work. hey now, okay. I do yard work. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, I, after uh, she actually, after the whole, you know, Roni virus thing happened, she had to come home from her, I, her I day did job. Work full time, yeah. She did, used to work full time, two jobs, and she had to come home to watch the kids, and ever since then, she just stayed at home and worked from home. And ever since then, she's mowed the yard, which has worked out great for me. Please well, do drag week in a Vista Cruiser. I would absolutely love to do drag week, and my great grandpa, he actually had a Vista Cruiser wagon, and that's what my dad, my grandparents, my great grandparents, and my uncle took and did their lap around the America trip in '75 or something like that. So he had a Vista Cruiser, so that would be cool to get at some point. Are you gonna ask something? Or... Uh, no. Okay. So somebody even asked, what does my dad do for a living? You may have picked up on this already, that he's an engineer. So dad's been an engineer ever since I was like in junior high. That's why we ended up where we live now, is because I had to move here with my dad when I was in junior high. But my dad is an engineer. Um, he's doing, doing that for like 25 years now. Um, and we met in high school. Yeah, me and her met in high school. Well, before high school, kind of. Yeah, eighth grade. Yeah, me and her met in eighth grade, and we got married at 19 years old. And so we've been married 17 years this 17. year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many goats are enough, honey? There's no limit. No there limit. There's no limit. Okay. Um, what about your mom? My mom. My mom lives about two hours from us, so I do have a mom. <laughs> She's yeah. alive and well. She's alive and well. We Very get along pretty. well. Uh, she watches all my videos and comments and stuff, but um, we don't get to see her a whole lot because she lives two hours away, and she doesn't really work on cars. And so. we would love to go to Australia summer nights. We oh, would, summer we would nights love would be that. awesome. Yes, yes, it would. Yeah, we would. So, um, um, who does the cooking in the family? Me, I do the cooking. Wawa does a lot of cooking. Do Mom does a lot of cooking. I cook every now and then. I can cook, but breakfast. I don't do a lot. He, he makes homemade gravy like nobody's business. I can make a mean breakfast. Uh, <laughs> how do I keep all my parts stored and organized? The answer to that is I do not. Um, <laughs> I, I do try to keep stuff in boxes. I order a bunch of stuff for a car, and I put it in a box. And... Uh, Sometimes I keep the boxes in the cars. I try not to do that, though. But we really need more storage. Um, we, I was counting the other day, and I'm pretty sure we have 22 vehicles now. So there's a lot to keep up with. I, I probably have a dozen cars that I have all the parts to do, go to the next stage with, like whether it's brakes or casings or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm not very good at organization because... We're, we're constantly working, too, you know? I mean, we're all the time working, and we don't have a ton of time to clean up and organize. So, you know, there's a lot of work that we don't have time to organize as much as we should, yeah. probably. But we already answered that one. Plans for the ice cream truck. Um, I would really love to lower the ice cream truck and do some sort of engine and transmission swap on it. That would be awesome. You need a V8 swap beta. That would be awesome too. But we plan to lower the Metro Mont and probably do some sort of V8 swap. We thought about doing a 4.0 Jeep swap in it. And then uh, I think I'm going to go V8 though on it. But definitely going to lower it. Definitely going to put some different hoops on it. And why do you say casings? What's the deal with casings? Casings. So I used to work with a guy in the body shop. I worked in the body shop for, well, between all the shops I worked at, probably 20 years in the body shop. And uh, an older guy I used to work with named Levi, uh, he was from the mountains and, in Tennessee, <laughs> and he would always call them casings. So he worked in the retread industry, I think, at some point, and worked with semi-trucks, and he would always call them casings. I thought it was hilarious. So I just started saying it, and it kind of stuck. So that's where the casings come from. It's actually the body of the tire, I'll say, 
Uh, if the tread's taken off of it before you do like a retread, that's where it's from. Um, I already talked. Uh, what's your favorite car we have on the channel, Mom? Mm. You have a. Does it have to be ours? I mean, the, the F1 was my favorite, but. Uh, well, let's Probably say the Metro Ma is my favorite now. What about you, Wawa? Ooh. Ones we have now. I really like the Falcon. I really do like the Falcon. Falcon's one of my favorites. Out of all of yours? Do yeah. Out of all the, the of my cars there. Okay, Probably the turbo coupe. He loves driving the turbo coupe. He like a lot of times if we're moving the turbo coupe around the yard, he'll drive it. But uh, yeah, me personally, I really love my red Fairmont with the big block I'm trying to work on, and I really love my uh, Falcon a lot. I really love the Falcon even more if it had a good paint job on it and a V8 and a five speed, which is our plans eventually with the Falcon. So at some point, we're probably going to do body work to the Falcon and try to paint it and do like a 302 and a five-speed swap. I like the Super Coupe. Yeah, Super Coupe's awesome back when it was running. Yes. So, um, which which vehicle took the most money to fix? Pro probably the motorhome project. Oh, for sure. Have to be the motorhome. We spent, the motorhome all said and done, we probably had close to six thousand dollars in the motorhome and then i sold it for fifteen hundred just to get back home uh, that was a bummer but that's yeah that's probably the most expensive one i mean uh, the the red fairmont futura is close probably if you count everything we've done with the engine so it's close to it uh but yeah probably the motorhome and the fairmont do i play the drums in a band or just at church so far it's just at church uh, I don't really do much things in a group as far as like hanging out with a bunch of buddies or doing anything. I, I don't really have people I hang out with much aside from just a couple friends that I see every now and then, but I'm not really a go out and hang out all the time guy. So no, I'm not in the band. Maybe one day, but I'm, I'm really more into the cars and, and pow pals and stuff. What are you going to convert to Crocs? I'm never converting to Crocs. Never going to wear a pair of Crocs. Like, where, a lot of people ask, where did the Croc joke come from? So we were just filming a video, and she was just in Crocs, and I like to point out... Some, All my claws, of course. I'll point out I'll something like, like, oh, curly hair, or... Because he doesn't like her curly hair. I'll, say, I'll say something about some shirt she's wearing, or <laughs> her shoes, or whatever. So one day we were filming, and I just said, oh, Crocs, and then... She made I a big deal. He's making fun of me on camera. So then it's like, I gotta pretty much do it every chance I get now. She's actually, look, I'm wearing flops. I got my reef flops, and she's got her crocs right now. You know, will we ever reconcile this? <laughs> I don't know. You got any more live questions? Uh, would you go for a TV show if they offered you a TV show? Hmm. Uh, I kind of doubt it. I mean, they would have to make a huge offer. Because I'm, I really like the way we do it. I feel like if there was a TV show ever involved that they might, you know, edit and change stuff in ways that I wouldn't want it to happen. It wouldn't be real or they would want fake drama. I'm and not all about... He can't stand TV shows, like all the stuff that goes on. He Pure is, movie snob. He, he is such a movie snob. Movie snob. All the time is picking out stuff. He won't hardly watch anything on TV. Yeah, so... Like shows like Street Outlaws or whatever, I'll fast if I'm am watching it, which I haven't watched it in probably a year. I'll fast forward through the drama part just to watch the race. Uh, I feel like uh, all those TV shows, like you watch whatever you want to watch, Discovery Channel or whatever. Uh, there's so much what I feel like is fake drama put in. I I know you guys probably feel the same way. That's why I think YouTube is so successful is because people are tired of watching fake. Clearly fake drama in videos. What happened to your fish flops? Where the fishy flops, those are strictly used for wintertime. I have a pair of them that uh, a viewer sent us. A brand new pair waiting. <laughs> yeah, I have a brand new pair in the plastic, as my buddy Roy would say. Crisp in the plastic. <laughs> so um, maybe uh, this winter I'll be back in the fishy flops. But uh, somebody sent them to us in our fan mail. 
And uh, I haven't even opened them because they're really hot in the summertime. They're kind of sweaty and stuff. Um, I said Star Wars or Star Trek. Star Wars all day long. Uh, well, the new motorhome owner let us know what's wrong with it. So I've been in contact with the new motorhome owner. And I contacted him probably, I don't know, it's been a month now since our breakdown. So, I, or something like that. So I, I contacted him a couple weeks later. He said he still hadn't figured out what was wrong with it. Then I contacted him again, and he said he replaced, he re-replaced the fuel pump in the tank. And then he replaced the fuel pump on the rail, and he got it to run for a longer period of time. I don't think that he has drove it on any trips yet to see if it's actually fixed, fixed. But he did put two new pumps in it after us, and he said he got it to run longer. So I don't know. Is it, Scooty still afraid of the shop? Scooter has figured out that there must be a mouse in the shop. So he has been out there every time I've been out there lately. So you'll see in some future videos that Scooter has actually been out in the shop. He lately. keeps us all safe. Yes. Yeah. He, he keeps us safe from mice for sure. Uh, I've already said all that. Did Ralphie's curls get the girls? Ha! That's Do you have question. a girlfriend? Do you still have your girlfriend from last year or no? Oh, you, don't you don't know? know? <laughs> so, as the girls at school like or dislike your hair choice? Mix. I love his hair choice. Mix, mix. mix. He's only been to school like two days. Here's one. Why do I talk funny? Um... <laughs> <laughs> this just in, why do I talk funny? I guess I talk funny because I was raised in, in Tennessee. And I also have a... Uh, He's tongue-tied. I'm tongue-tied from the factory. He won't let me cut it. So my tongue is tied at the bottom pretty tight. So it it makes it hard to pronounce a couple letters. Oh. But I don't think it's that big a deal. But uh, Ralphie needs a golf cart. Everybody thinks Ralphie needs a golf cart. Ralphie needs a golf cart. We need to be looking for a golf cart for sure then. Uh, we might be able to work something out the one we saw at the junk car. we got to check back with them. How's your old boss trying to get you to come back to the body shop? <laughs> I've had about three different bosses try to get me to come back to the body shop. And as of right now, I'm loving being at home. I'm uh, still working, you know, too many hours. But it's nice to not have to, like, be at work at a certain time. So, so, if I'm really tired or whatever, usually I wake up and I'll start doing comments on my phone in bed uh, if I'm real tired or something. But if I don't, if, but, you know, it's not daylight yet or whatever. Sometimes I'll do that. But yeah, they try to get me to come back to the body shop. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Oh, Scooter, hey, hey. You're okay. It's okay, Scooter. So, uh, what's next? Any new cars coming? Any new cars coming. So we have actually, we have got two different new vehicles on the channel that are going to be coming out real soon. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see two different new vehicles that we've got. But uh, those will be coming out. I've already started editing the video, so they'll be out pretty soon. Will we ever do any more motorcycle stuff? The wife probably would not want that. Um... <laughs> Do you want more motorcycle stuff? Yes. I mean, it's fine as long as you don't drive it all the time. So you're not going to be driving it to uh, work. So that's fine. So, yeah. She doesn't really like me driving a motorcycle much for safety issues. Which is kind of understandable, you know. Uh, not because he can't drive. Because everybody else can't drive. Or is on You, you might not see another motorcycle on the channel. I'm not sure what it would be. It'd have to be something older probably. Because that's what I like. I really like the Japanese box that flat seat and air-cooled chain drive box. What is the car you re get rid of the most? Oh, man, that's a close one. Probably. I can tell you what I regret him getting rid of, which we, it wasn't on video, but the Samurai. We had a... I had a nice Samurai. We had a clean... We were the second owners of a, of a Samurai that a lady bought brand new. And that thing was super nice. She misses that. I, probably just because of how he fast... He sold it right up from under me. I was driving it to... We was at Pigeon Forge on vacation and he sold it. I had to drive something else home. <laughs> so, I I probably missed the Starlet the most just because of how fast it was. It wasn't really very practical. It would be a close second with the Maverick probably. I kind of... Sometimes I like to have the Maverick back. Um, 
He has a YouTube channel, but he doesn't really post videos much. What's that? Um, I'm starting a job as an apprentice body shop tech at a dealership. Any tips you can give him? Um, if you're a, a starting out as a body tech, I would say stay very organized. Like, uh, put all your bolts and stuff in bags, organize it all. Go over your estimates and make sure that everything's on that estimate it's supposed to be. All your removing and install stuff is on there, retaping moldings, that kind of stuff adds up over time. The biggest one though is showing up to work, always doing whatever has to be done. If you show up earlier than everybody else and leave later than everybody else and do a great job, then you will do better than everybody else. So that's what I would say. Stay organized, work hard, don't talk, keep your head down. Is there anything that Rocky won't eat? No. Uh, Rocky, he doesn't like carbonated drinks. He doesn't like RC colors. Uh, Rocky chews on a lot of stuff and spits it out, like metal or plastic, if you're worried about him. He just chews on it and spits it back out. Have you ever lived on rice and beans? Uh, I guess that's a Dave Ramsey reference. So, we have definitely lived on rice and beans. Uh, there was a time where we were trying to pay all of our stuff off, and, I mean, we didn't spend nothing we didn't have. And we didn't make any YouTube videos because we didn't pay for internet. Yeah, that was, there was a time there where there was like nine months without a YouTube video getting uploaded a few years back, and that was because we cut off the cable, we cut off the internet, everything. So, we definitely have lived on beans and rice, and that's part of the why I was able to quit my job was, you know, trying to pay everything off and, you know, become debt free to be able to do stuff like this. So, yeah, we have definitely lived on beans and rice. Um, you got any live ones there? Um, what about Cletus and Cars? We have several questions. We are going to Cletus and Cars. We are not racing there. If you guys will comment on Cletus' stuff and tell him Sleeper he wants to race, that'd be awesome. Um, but we do plan to go there as just spectators. Yeah. As of right now, we're just going to be there as spectators and just to meet fans walking around and stuff. Uh, unless we can work out a deal with Cletus to be in the race or in the burnout competition. If we can work that out, we'll definitely do that. Uh, go go comment on his channel if you'd like for us to be at that event. Uh, what about, are you going to Pigeon Forge in the fall? We usually try to go to Pigeon Forge for Shades of the Past or Rod Run. Um, we used to go religiously, but we were so busy with the channel a lot of times now uh, we will probably be there. It would probably be just for a Saturday, so maybe we'll make some sort of announcement that we're going to be up there. But yeah, I, I really enjoy going to Pigeon Forge. And what about Ford Fest? We definitely plan on going to Bowling Green yeah. Ford Fest. I saw somebody, uh, we had a super chat that said, bigger shop and a lift. I would love to have a lift in our shop. That was the original plan, was to put a lift in it. So the long-term goal would be, yes, to build a bigger shop, and yes on a lift, but neither one of those, I haven't put any money down on either one of those things yet. So both of those are, um, you know, in the works, but nothing's happening major yet. Uh, so is there, here's one for you guys. Is there a specific car on the channel that you would like to know information about on where it's at or what we're doing with it? Put that in the, the live chat and we'll answer those. I can answer some stuff on specific vehicles that we have on there. Uh, how much? I got this is important. Will you get prairie dogs? Yes. Uh, really she will. would love to have prairie dogs. I don't, can you great. own a prairie dog? I don't know. Yeah. I need to know this. I don't know that owning a prairie dog is legal or not. Is it? <laughs> okay, so this one says, I don't know either. Uh, when are you going to have a junkyard built off with hot rod order and then race them like you did at tech school? Oh, man, we definitely raced at Tech School. That would be awesome. Um, I would love to do something like that. Maybe me and Hot Rod Hoarder can, like, meet at Brainerd Drag Strip. If you know Brainerd Drag Strip in Georgia, that's, like, my go-to track. Maybe we could uh, get something together there where me and him could race at the track. Um, I, used to, I used to street race back in the day, I will say, back a long time ago before we had kids. And I actually got busted in my Maverick for street racing. Oh, it's and a bad day. Yeah, before Wawa was born even. So, uh, I have to do it at the track now because I got in trouble <laughs> for that. But, here's one we had written down. How much gas did we burn in the RV? We were burning, we were burning about 
three tanks a day on those 600 mile days and you know so we were probably burning about what was that probably four hundred dollars in fuel a day alarming rates <laughs> yeah alarming rates. real fast but yeah probably three to four hundred dollars a day we drove it what did we make it we made it two and a half days so i guess we burned about a thousand dollars in fuel in the rv and then I don't know how much we burnt in the minivan getting back, but we tried our best. Uh, if you're wondering about the motorcycle deal, we tried our very best to get a truck or a 15 passenger van to do our uh, trip back to where we could save the motorcycle, but there was literally none to be had at all. We could not get a truck or van to haul the motorcycle back. Squeezy's already left. She's done with this. She it's has what, a very small attention span. Yeah. What, yeah. What's up with the dart wagon? The dart wagon, uh, obviously, still runs and drives and everything. I'm working on getting floor pans for the dart wagon. So, I've talked to one company, which is the only company I have found that has dart wagon floor or <laughs> dart floor pans. But if you know of a company that has dart floor pans uh, for a '63 or four dart, something like that. Let me know um, because I've only found one place, and when I called them, they were like, I'm, I need to call them back in a month or two or something. So I want to put floor pans and quarters in it and do exhaust on it. So we still have the dart wagon. We just need to get on it. Um, any other car update questions on some of the cars on the channel? Um, do the kids play sports? I do. Wawa <laughs> and Ralphie play basketball. Ralphie used to play baseball for a couple different seasons, but he has since switched into basketball. So he is a, he is ready to grow up and dunk it, right? He's ready to, to get bigger. But they are both good basketball players. So we, we make sure we make it to all their games and stuff. Uh, it gets pretty hectic during basketball season for us, especially with my when I had my other job. Um, here's one we had written down. Did Ford make a Turbo Fairmont? Yes, they made a 2.3 Turbo Fairmont carbureted. I don't know off the top of my head, maybe you guys know exactly what years they did that, but I know they did that. Um, and they were turds, I mean, just being quite honest. Um, they didn't make any power. They were probably like, 120 horsepower or something they weren't much but they did make a turbo fairmont from the factory um that did happen so about the the hearse that was at the um junkyard yeah. it was already spoken for we would love to have bought it but there was like three other names already on it so we couldn't get it yeah um a lot of you guys had questions about some of the cars that were at the junkyard um when we originally went so there was like a gtx there there was a Torino GT. There was a uh, Mercury Cyclone there. Um, there was that, uh, the Hearse there. All those cars were already spoken for. There was a 66 or 7 two-door post Nova. Uh, there was a, like a 65 Nova wagon there. I would love to have had. All the really sought after cars were already taken. By the time I got in that junkyard, they had already crushed like 800 or 1,000 vehicles. So I didn't get in early enough to be able to have a chance at the really desirable ones. Uh, also, he was keeping every single truck. So couldn't get any trucks. All the desirable cars were, he was either keeping them or uh, somebody already claimed them. So um, luckily, nobody but me wanted Fairmonts and stuff. So I was able to get those. But yeah, most of the really super desirable cars were already already taken. All right, we got some more live ones because I'm all out of my paperwork here. We're gonna go straight to just live questions for a little bit before we sign off here. You got anything? Um. Hello from Sydney, Australia, from SM. What was my first car? Who's yours or mine? Mine. You go ahead. What was your <laughs> first car? Just the Pontiac Grand Am. She had like a 95 Pontiac Grand Am that I had to put a, a uh, what did I put in it? A water pump that ran off the timing chain before we ever got married. What is Ralph going to do when he grows up? What do you want to do? I don't know. He ain't figured that out yet. We didn't, we didn't get to those questions. Huh? You didn't do that. No, good. you got to squeeze. Bro. Oh, go ahead. Mm, probably a surgeon or some kind of doctor. 
Because I like how was some I like to thing to work on cars. Yeah. I, I, uh, you want to work on cars? You said? And we are not sponsored by um RC Color or or Vine. Yeah. Yeah. People ask us about whether we have a sponsorship. We're we're not sponsored by RC Cola. <laughs> that's why we share the same bottle. Yeah, that's why we're we're sparing with them. Uh, they're hard to come by. So a fan sent those in the fan mail, but we're not sponsored by either one. I just like them. Uh, the only sponsors I might should shout out is um, Holly has real been real nice to us. They have helped us out with parts, prices on stuff. Uh, here and there, they'll donate some stuff to us. So Holly has been a great sponsor for us so far. And uh, also, we have worked with Coker at Coker Tire, should I say it? So, Coker has been a good sponsor to us as well. So, uh, really, um, that's about the only really great sponsors that we uh, have been dealing with. Every now and then, you know, the ads you'll see where I do a sponsorship, those are just on one video. But And what about your funny little commercials you do, like... Ah. Like you're not getting paid for... No, no, no. All the funny ads where I'm talking about, uh, what is it? Baloo, better Baloo mac and cheese or pig's feet or, or fat back or whatever. All those are just jokes. We just had the can or the box of macaroni in the house. She had bought better Baloo mac and cheese. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I should do a silly ad about it. So, it wrong. Uh, Beef and juices, yes. Right. Yeah, so we're not paid by pickled pig's feet or nothing. Uh, that's just me having fun, wanting to do something funny on the channel. Um, we're not paid by any of those guys right there, for sure. Um, what else here? We haven't tried the Aussie Vegemite stuff. No, no. We've tried the Australian... Um, Their pineapple things are awesome. Pineapple lumps are awesome, but we have not try any uh, other stuff much aside from what they sent us what's the story on dad's monte carlo ss from brian so that car i actually drove to auto body school when i was like 16 and eventually i was pretty hard on that car doing burnouts and stuff uh eventually the transmission started leaking from the front seal and my dad parked it so i drove that car for maybe six months or whatever uh, thank you, Arctic Enterprises. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you like the Falcon videos. Um, but Dad, there's questions. Um, Dad has a bunch of cars, as you can see in the video. We're working on trying to get some more of my Dad's cars uh, up and running. But Dad is an engineer. Yeah. And Josh is very fast-paced, if you can't tell. Yeah. So their timelines don't really mesh too well. It's hard to schedule stuff sometimes with Dad. Uh, he wants to be very involved with it, and usually he likes to schedule it way out. So we're working on scheduling towards maybe getting another one of my dad's cars run. He has some really cool stuff, mostly Chevrolets. Uh, I grew up with my dad always having Chevrolets, but then kind of how I went towards the Ford stuff. I'm not a Ford only guy. You probably have figured that out by now. I really don't care what it is, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, Datsun. I don't care to do weird engine swaps. That's kind of my favorite thing to do is do weird engine swaps on stuff. Um, but I worked at a Mustang shop when I was 16 years old, and we were just working on Fox Body Mustangs. And uh, then I really got into watching Sloppy Mechanics videos after that. And I just kind of fell in love with uh, Fox Body Mustang stuff. My dad bought a, an old one bullet Mustang and kind of, you know, just fell in love with that platform uh, for vehicles, so I really like those. So this person needs to know, how do you order shirts? How do you order shirts? We don't have a website. You, The only way to order shirts is below the videos. You can click on a shirt below the video, and it'll take you to, to I think they changed your name from Teespring to Spring, didn't they? I think so, something like that. It takes you to Spring's website, and Spring does the printing and the shipping on all the t-shirts, so we don't have, like, a thousand t-shirts at our house all those shirts are printed and shipped from an off-site location so if you go to springs website you can see all our shirts we have uh the flip-flops and maypop shirt we have a sleeper dude fairmont wagon shirts 
we have the new RV shirt. We have a, a Ralphie approved shirt, which has Ralphie's picture on it. And then we have a Rocky. Is it, is I think it, there's a Rocky shirt. There's a Rocky shirt now. A lot of you guys probably don't know that. But if you go to Spring's website, there is shirts with Rocky on it now. We're just not very good at, at getting all that done. We, we eventually need to probably build a website and ship some of our own stuff. But honestly, we're working as fast as we can on a lot of stuff. It's amazing how much work goes into it. But uh, Hey, and by the way, there is never a dull moment with Dad. It can be early in the morning or late night. He is yeah, always making jokes. He is always, always joking. making jokes. Aggravating to the very core. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stefan, there for the, the donation. Your number one fan. I see it right there. Any plans for a full restoration of a car or truck? Um, so, yes, there is plans of fully restoring the Falcon Futura, the 63.5 Falcon Futura. It's going to get an engine, transmission, rear end swap. We've already done a bunch of stuff on the interior. And, yes, that car, the plan is to fully restore it. Eventually, I'm sure we'll restore other ones, but that car is the priority on restoration right now. What did the green one say? Uh, let's see. Uh, Just love watching your videos. Yeah. What's the name? Charles. Charles. Thank you, Charles, for that. We appreciate it. And Ralphie actually has been to the Corvette Museum in Kentucky. We went, was it last year? There's actually a video. If you watched the video of us going to Ford Fest last year in the Falcon, we took them all to... Uh, the Corvette Museum, and they got to even drive a simulator there. Um, we did go to the Corvette Museum. They actually have a Thunderbird there at the Corvette Museum. And a Viper, both. Um, one person was asking, why do you have a second channel? Okay, the second channel has kind of become what the first channel used to be. So, with YouTube, you kind of got to be picky if you have a lot of views on what you put out. So, if you put out a video that you know, may only get a few thousand views. Because it's hard for them, it's hard to get them to show your videos to people anyway. Yeah, you basically, to succeed in YouTube, you gotta have a bunch of views, a bunch of views, a bunch of views. And if you have a bunch of views and then you have several, say, short videos that don't get a lot of views, it really messes you up when you release the next long video. So we, I wanna be able to put out short videos that don't take quite as long and show you guys some of the behind the scenes stuff. So that's why I have a second Without channel. Without messing up the view yeah. of the main channel. Because if you're putting out videos that are getting a quarter million views per video, and then you put out you know, a short little clip of you doing mowing your yard or whatever you're doing, um, you know, it can mess up everything for your next video. So we kind of like to leave the short stuff there. But Thank you, Brian. We, we try to put shorter stuff that's not quite as edited on the second channel. And a little bit of us. We went to Bucky's. I couldn't believe how many people watched the Bucky's video on the Bucky's second Bucky's is cool, though. Yeah, we love cool. going there. But um, we couldn't believe the amount of views we got out of the Bucky's video on the second channel. So this is a question we kind of talked about this before, but um, any collaboration with Bicep Brunch, we would love to. Um, we've emailed them, but we haven't, they haven't gotten back with us. So. Right. We may have to try Maybe to reach out again. Sometime. I've never even met uh, Derek from Bicep Garage. Maybe if you guys watch that channel, you could comment on him about doing a collaboration with Sleeper Dude. The only other YouTuber I can think of that I even uh, know personally that I've met is Hot Rod Hoarder. Uh, I stay in touch with Hamiltonville Farms, but uh, we've never met in person yet. So he seems like a very like-minded person. And um, why is Rocky not here? Rocky's not here because we had to drive to my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house to do this because our internet service is so bad at home. We can't do a live stream from the shop. So we're trying to get better internet. And it's, and it's really funny, too. Like, he's already in bed. Like, okay. honest to goodness. Rocky would be asleep if he was here. Like, as soon as it gets a little bit time, he goes to the bar and he's ready for bed. Yeah, even, like, in the wintertime, he's, like, 5 o'clock, he's in bed. But we're going to try to get better internet service. We don't have another option right now. If we can get better internet at home, we will do live streams from the garage with Rocky. But uh, Scooty was the only one that was the, able to come. The Starlink internet? Did we try the Starlink when it's six, like a year it was like, or something? Yeah, we looked into the Starlink and it was like two years waiting or it's something. It's crazy. Uh, um, are you still in contact with Joe Garcia from South Dakota? Yeah, we sent Joe Garcia a few uh, 
uh, we see him in a care package with a few shirts and stuff in it. Uh, we stay in contact with him, yes. Joe Garcia is awesome. Like we said in the video, he was the only person who stopped and checked on us on the side of the interstate. And was willing to do anything. He's like, do I need to take you somewhere? Or do you need some money? No uh, you know, I can come back and get you later. All kinds of stuff. So that was very nice. I mean, obviously not many other people know where I stopped, so... Okay, so this guy's saying get Starlink. Uh, love the RV stuff. Uh, yeah, we would, we would like to get better internet, but we haven't been able to do it yet. Um, uh, let's see. If you're on my live stream. Okay. Oh, are you near Deals Gap? I think that's about a 45-minute drive for us. So with the tail of the dragon or Deals Gap, me and Ralphie, well, we've all drove it because we yeah. got in your car yeah. one time. Yeah. We took our Valari wagon on it, me and Ralphie and my dad one year, and then me and all, well, all of us went one time in mom's car. So, yeah, we went to the, the Dragon and drove the Dragon. Uh, it's like 300 curves in 11 miles. It's kind of crazy. It makes me a little bit sick, honestly. Yeah, she gets sick in the curve. Uh, what is this? Ever been to Cincinnati? No. Uh... I'm missing Jeopardy. You are correct. I am missing Jeopardy. Yeah, the 63 Falcon was uh, the, the grandfather to the Mustang for sure. Man, this is hard to keep up with. I know. Uh, do we have any merch? Yes, it's below. You need to do a Harbor Freight haul video. Yeah, we're all the time in Harbor Freight for sure. How's the RV's AC? Man. <laughs> uh, that's not nice. Man. That's hilarious. Yeah, and a lot of you guys were commenting uh, about the RVs they see. We could have recharged it or whatever. You can write those down if you want, if you see a good one. But um, I I hated that I punched a hole in the condenser on the RV's AC unit. I know we could have got it brazed up and recharged, but that thing did not have charging ports on it. So every place I checked with it was like... They would have to cut the lines and braze in new fittings and charge it. So nobody had the parts or the stuff to do it, or we would have recharged the AC on the RV and got it going. And we even had to leave the brand new AC unit in the RV because we had no room to bring it home. So they got a brand new uh, set of casings. They got a brand new AC unit and a brand new generator. And uh, unfortunately... <laughs> We did not get to keep any of that stuff. We might have tried to do that if we could have got a big van, like a 15 passenger van, or uh, got some sort of uh, you know truck or something to haul it back in, but we didn't have the option of hauling it back. The Redneck Rumble in Lebanon. I don't think I've ever been to that. I've heard of it. Um, we might need to check out about going there. Uh, I've heard stuff about it, but I've never actually been to it. What about Power Tour next year? We've actually done Power Tour a couple times. Yeah, a lot of you guys asked about why we didn't go to Power Tour. The main reason why we didn't go to Power Tour is because we have a lot of cars that run and drive, but not a lot of cars that run and drive that have an overdrive transmission or, you know, have work in AC and the stuff that would make it good for the whole family. I don't want them to, like, suffer through the trip. So, uh, yeah, we would like to do Power Tour. I've actually been on Power Tour probably at least half a dozen times so me and my dad went starting in 1999 and i think we went about every year until maybe 2006 or so and then we've been three or four times since then we went we, didn't, we haven't done the long haul since like maybe 2004 but we went uh several years there we might have been 10 times to the power tour but i'd like to do power tour I'd like to get maybe the Falcon or something, one of the Thunderbirds or Fairmonts to the point where we could do it. I really hope that now that we're back from the trip, I can focus on getting some. And what about my Ford truck? Her Ford truck is waiting on parts for the shifter that are back ordered. We have a couple parts. Uh, we've already bought new for the F100, but it is waiting on some parts for the shifter right now to get it to work because it only has first gear and we actually got reverse didn't we yeah we got reverse and first so um we're waiting on parts to fix the shifter and we already have some upgrade parts we're going to put on it uh what about the turkey run in daytona turkey run in daytona i did that 
we, me and my dad used to go to that every year uh, back in the later 90s and early 2000s. Um, I would love to go back to the turkey run. I really enjoy that event, but I don't know when we're going to be able to go to it, but I would like to go back to it. Um, do you ride? Do we ride roller coasters at Bellingham? Oh yeah, we do. Oh, everybody, these kids, they ride everything. Yes, we yeah. do. Everybody mom, but mom every time. rides Mom's roller coasters. Scary cat. Yeah. Oh, very um, they. I love riding roller coasters. I tell you, the only ride I'm scared of is uh, a Ferris wheel. Scares me to death. It does. So I don't like the heights and the slow moving. As long as I'm moving fast, like on a roller coaster. Uh, I really <laughs> enjoy I'm it. for all rides. All we right. went, what was it, two years ago we went to Disney. Yeah, our yeah. first, it was our first time going to Disney. And uh, we rode everything at Disney when we went down there. Um, the kid this guy was, is just like nothing. Well, yeah, the, the way you see him when he doesn't show much emotion at all, that's how he is. You put him in the line for like the biggest rides or whatever, or you take him down the road in a really fast car or something. He's just like, oh, that was cool. Like, yeah, I try to get him, like, hey, what's your... He's like, that's how I am, you know? I'm trying to get him to show more emotion, but he, he doesn't really do that. I was going to have you tell him about Squeezie's answers. Did they catch that Squeezie's answers were all crazy on the... Oh, yeah. You you may have not understood some of Squeezie's answers because she was talking really quiet, but uh, Squeezie wasn't sure of where we broke down. She thought we broke down... Where was it? Did she say Pittsburgh? She said Pittsburgh, or California. and she said California. Uh, we didn't go to any of those places. Yeah. Squeezy, <laughs> Squeezy has fun on a trip, but she doesn't really pay attention to like anything where we're at or you know stuff like that. So she didn't know some of the answers for sure. I navigated us to get where we are yes. today. We'll yes. probably still be up there. <laughs> Do you? We have any four x four jeeps or trucks on your channel? Hopefully. Yes, we're we're trying to do some sort of four x four. Uh, you're actually going to see a video pretty soon of a full drive vehicle on the channel, so that will be coming up pretty soon. Uh, we're get, our next video that's coming out is going to be a will it start video, um, so you should see that. I don't know if it's going to come out for sure tomorrow or the next day. You should see a will it start video from us. Thoughts on Nashville? We love Nashville. Yes, we do love Nashville. We've been there a lot. How old is Scooter? Is he five? Yeah, he's five. Yeah, Scooter's five years old. And Rocky's like a year or something? He'll be two in February. Okay, Rocky's two. I got him for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah, I bought Rocky for her on Valentine's Day. And I, he was a, a quadruplet. So uh, he was only like this big. And he actually lived in our house for the first month of his life. So he will walk straight in the door just like he lives there. Oh, yeah. Right in the house. Yeah, he's terrible if you're bring, coming home with groceries. It's terrible. Because he gets right up at there. You have to clean him out. Yeah. Uh, you got like monster trucks? This guy does. Whoa. Uh, why did I take a 31-year-old motor home on a cross-country trip? Uh, I thought it would make it, honestly. Um, I would not have done like a with the family. I would not have done like a will it start as far as getting it running that day and driving it 5,000 miles. But, you know, we made a test run around town like you guys saw, and we made a test run to Fall Creek Falls. And, you know, it did stumble a little at Fall Creek Falls. So, yeah, uh, there were, I probably should have drove it more, but, I mean, honestly, it made 600 miles before it stumbled again. So I, I could have drove it 500 miles on a test run, and it wouldn't have done it. So it was kind of hard to know that was going to come. I, I I wish I would have tried bypassing all the fuel lines. Um, but man, it was tough. We spent five hours on the side of the interstate, and that was really stressful on her, especially. The when first we, probably 45 minutes to an hour was very stressful because we were like right over the top of a hill just a little bit. So you would see these trucks coming over the top of the hill and you just hope they got over because if they didn't, it just like shook the whole thing. And I'm super paranoid about getting hit by a car on the side of the road because I've been there several times on the side of the road. Yeah. So I was probably not the nicest person for about an hour. And like I said, I'm I'm pretty cool about a breakdown. It doesn't bother, shake me up much, but I'm usually breaking down 30 minutes from home or less and breaking down... 
you know, I've never broke down that far from home before. We were 1,400 miles from home. And the fact that I had all of us in there, and if, if we would have had a, a car behind us, towing a car, that we could all get in and leave, I don't think I would have been that stressed out either. But the fact that uh, I was going to have to leave all them behind if I left on the motorcycle, I didn't like that at all. So we're definitely going to have to address that if we go on another long trip. Uh, it was way more stressful on me than I thought to break down all of them and be somewhere like South Dakota that is in the middle of nowhere. And, and our, our plan was to go Yellowstone and then go down and end up going through Utah, which if you've been through the middle of Utah, there's a lot of, you know, no cell service and desert. And we were going to go down through Arizona, New Mexico, and I was like, I don't want to fix this thing now and then end up breaking down a little bit farther, you know, in the desert or whatever. Um, do you still feel like you made a good choice by giving a body work job? Yes, I definitely feel like I made a good choice by leaving the body shop. Uh, I definitely uh, I definitely enjoy being at home more than I did being gone at the shop every day. It took some getting used to at first. Like the first few weeks especially was really weird to get used to. But I love just being at home with them all day and being able to work when I want and not work when I want, which I pretty much work all the time still. But it's nice to... we. Uh, this last week, we went tubing down the Hiawassee River on, what, a Thursday or something? Yeah, Thursday. We went on a Thursday and tubed down the Hiawassee River together. Uh, we've made a couple day trips since we've been off that we didn't video. Just just us having fun without having to video it. And um, it's really been neat to be able to just whenever you want to, just, you know, pack your stuff and go. Um I guess this is a question we've heard. Oh, I guess everybody's telling Ralphie hi and wah wah hi. This is a question a lot of people were asking is like, um, would we want to finish out the trip we made? Definitely. So, so you, you want to go on another road trip, right? You oh, yeah. I want to go see the stuff that we talked about. So I don't know what that's going to mean. If that's going to mean taking the mini wee on, you know, whatever, 5,000 miles. If we do it again, I think I'll go south first because we pretty much saw what we wanted to see between here and South Dakota. There, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff we probably missed, right. but there wasn't a lot on our map that me and Wawa marked to see between here and South Dakota. So, <laughs> funny thing is, like, Rapid City was the very first town that we wanted to go to and see several things at. So... Um, it was funny that we broke down just as we got into where we wanted to be. I guess it's better than breaking down in the middle of nowhere uh, with nothing to see. But I wish we could have went to, went to uh, Yellowstone, but it's probably a bad time to visit because Yellowstone was flooded and the roads were washed out. But yeah, maybe we'll go a southern route down the coast so they can go to the beach. You know? Yes. And I, I'm the ocean person. I love whoa. the beach. So maybe next time we'll try to go southern route and then go up into, you know, Arizona and Utah and Colorado up that way and then eventually maybe get into Yellowstone. But it was uh it was really neat. Custer when we went to Custer it felt like we were Yellowstone with all the buffalo and Boston that were there. But if you have any live questions put them in because we probably Any plans for future uh, meet and greet? Yes, I mean, uh, I think I already answered this, but yes, uh, we're going to be at uh, Cleus and Cars Bristol and Ford Fest for sure. Probably end up being at maybe Rod Run or Shades of the Past and Pigeon Forge. So we definitely want to do some sort of meet and greet stuff um, in the future. But if you have a live comment or question about one of our cars or us that hasn't been answered or you're wondering, put it in the live stream because we probably won't be live too much longer on this. I don't want a bunch of dead air time. You know, I hate dead, dead air time in my videos. This guy says, Bicycle Garage is live. We need to go there and tell oh. him. <laughs> we should go knock on his door, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I didn't know we were live. Do it for Dale. Yeah. Uh, did you, have you been boat racing? No, the closest I've ever been to a boat, my stepdad had a boat when I was a kid. But we did, we did some boat racing when we oh, were in we, Miami. We went, cool. we went to Miami and Key West on an a anniversary trip, and we watched some uh, offshore boat racing, but we didn't even know what was going on. It was really neat to watch, especially from Key West. It was beautiful. But stepdad had a boat when I was a kid. We got out on him. It was just a fishing boat. But no, I've never been into boat racing or anything like that. Um, 
never have really got into boats. Honestly, I've been really singular, singularly focused most of my life with car stuff. Uh, I really get into, uh, you know, guns and stuff too, but uh, most of my life it's been car stuff. I really just love car stuff. My dad, when I was a kid, had a huge magazine collection, so he had popular hot rodding books from back in the 70s, and I would sit in my great-grandparents' basement and read popular hot rodding books, and then my dad had a subscription to Hot Rod Magazine, and I, I grew up on Hot Rod Magazines and popular hot rodding, just like, uh, you know, Hot Rod Hoarder did. Me and him had really similar uh, childhoods as far as stuff like that, really being into stuff, but... And it's okay if you guys don't want to say casings, if you want to say tires, it's okay. Oh, okay. No. It's okay. We'll give you a pass if that's what you're going to do, but... It's the Malibu. We still got the Malibu. The Malibu, yes, we still have it. It has been in the shop for like a month or two now. It's been in the shop. They're laughing like crazy at the comments. Oh, They're sorry. reading it's you guys' hilarious. comments. It's hilarious. It's been great. But um, we've had the Malibu in there. We plan on doing the brakes on it and getting it, uh, maybe doing some tune-up stuff on the engine, you know, that quadribog on there. We gotta do a little bit of adjustment to it. I kinda like to do like drag testing on the Malibu. Maybe take it down to the drag strip and do like uh, some passes in it, see what we can do with some performance upgrades at the track maybe. That would be kinda neat to do, to take it down to Brainerd one night or something like that. You got any other live ones before we sign off? Uh, no, I don't think Anything else we need to say? So, uh, I guess we're going to get off here pretty soon. Uh, if you don't already know, we got a second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. And you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at um, Sleeper Dude 88. Another thing I was going to say about that. Shortly, we're going to be starting to put up uh, shorter versions of our videos on Facebook. So, you'll probably see a change on our Facebook going towards putting out videos on there. Uh, we're going to try to do some short form videos on there coming up soon. Um, we do TikTok, but uh, I honestly don't put a ton of, of time into TikTok. Uh, they keep they keep getting on to me because they're like, I post a video of Ralphie and me running when we were at the camping trip and they pulled it saying I was da endangering a minor for him running in the dark with me. But they pull our videos off there for odd reasons. So I can't really post hardly anything with the kids in it on TikTok, unfortunately. But, well, I guess we're going to sign off here. We're going to do two claps for Rick Flair. Oh, well, go ahead. All right, you ready? Go two ahead. claps for Rick Flair. Woo! So we'll see you guys next time. I have no idea when we're going to do another live stream. But thank you very much for tuning in, and we're going to sign off here. If I can figure out how to turn the phone we off. We can't figure this out. I'm, I'm not very good at this at all. <laughs>